Hey everybody, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. This is episode two where we're going to work on the hall. Uh, as you can see, it's assembled and I've got all the basic uh, paint colors together. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and cover assembling the hall, all the basic stuff that you need to see and know about it. We're going to oil can or slash tin can um, the hall. I know that uh, a lot of you are like, no, don't do it. It's a battleship, but it doesn't have dents in it at all. Well, here's a little reference picture for you. As you can see, it obviously is uh, oil canned or tin canned, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I've never done this before, and you'll see in this video that I try out two different methods. Obviously, the second one works out. I run into some trouble. It doesn't go perfectly. Uh, I'm frustrated with it, and then eventually things smooth out, um, and, and I'm pretty happy with the end results. Uh, then we'll talk about painting. We do some of the detailing on the hall, which you can't really make out from here. Um, but that's kind of the point of this whole thing is you look at the ship from here way back where you're at. It looks nice and smooth and perfect. When you zoom in close, you can see all the detailed work that we've done. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Brian at BAS Dry Docks. He recommended that I go get um, Battleship Missouri, illustrated by uh, Paul Stillwell. Brian's a good guy. He's working on the USS Arizona by uh, the Hobby Boss kit, I believe, in one 350th scale. I'll put a link to his shop down below. Go check out what he's doing because that's a much more manageable sized kit than the one 200th scale kit. Um, so, yeah, anyway, this book was really great. I'm glad he got it to me. It's a great reference source I'm trying to use to get things right. Uh, I do want to talk briefly about the colors here. Um, so we're doing measure 21, 22, sorry. Red, black bootstripe. The blue that you see here is supposed to be navy blue. And I have navy blue in enamel. It's the same color as the Arizona. I painted that on and it was super dark. I mean, it was, it was still navy blue and it worked and everything, but just it was, it was too dark, especially compared to like the box art in the back and kind of what I envisioned in my mind. So what I did is I went back with some intermediate blue uh, by Model Master, which is a lighter color. I, I could have easily painted the whole thing the intermediate blue and it would have looked almost exactly like the box, but that would have been a little off. So instead I modulated what I painted on here because we are going to weather this. These are just the base colors on right now. Uh, and that lightened it up, and you see what you see here. It turned out really nice. I mentioned at the end, uh, the gray at the top of the bow here that we're going to use is supposed to be haze gray. Um, haze gray is not available by Model Master anymore in enamel. Uh, they're doing away with their enamel paints. Eventually, I'm going to have to switch over to all acrylic, too. I don't know when that's going to be, but probably when I run out of paint to buy. Uh, but the equivalent is... Uh, French light blue gray, I believe. It's at the very end of the video. I show the bottle. Uh, and it ends up being a, basically a dead match for uh, the haze gray that we're going to do the top part of the ship in. So most of you want to just skip right to the end. You can see kind of the final results here. The uh, tin canning slash oil canning worked out great, whatever phrase you want to use. And uh, yeah, sorry, lots of talking. Go ahead and jump in and check this video out. And uh, We'll see you guys next time. All right, here is the hull assembled, all 53, and I measured it a quarter inches. Uh, let's see here, there's the seam right there. Pretty good fit. And yes, I went ahead and marked off the, uh, was it the boot, black boot stripe line. Uh, I went ahead and put the top piece on. Well, here's what I did. I took a piece of wood, measured up 60 millimeters, put my pencil in it. On it like this, I just drug it all the way around the ship, which is really convenient because a ship this size can get away with it. This is a quarter inch line I went down. I marked it off. This tape's going to be coming off because we've got to do a lot of marking for the um, next part of the hull that we're going to work on. I wanted to point out right in front of the brace, that aft brace, the, the bow, if you, or the, the hull seems to come in a little bit. See what I'm talking about? And then it spreads back out. I'm not sure if that's on purpose uh, or just a result of the molding, but we're definitely going to have to put the deck on soon to kind of 
give this thing its structure and rigidity. But I did want everyone to see the inside before I close it up. This piece, this piece, and that piece are the uh, two bulkhead frames, if you will, that um, they provide with you to support the whole thing. So anyway, that's what the inside looks like. And there we're back up to see the whole thing. And now let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, real quick, here's the uh, back rudder parts installed and the shafts for the outboard propellers. Uh, the red is everywhere that obviously we had to fill in a little bit with some putty to make everything look right. Uh, the rudders actually required the most. For some reason, they sat really high uh, above the bottom of the hull. But no big deal, a little bit of putty and it goes together just fine. All right, let's start laying out our grid pattern on the hull for the dent. So we have our water line that I showed you in a previous video was drawn uh, straight and level across the strip. So what we need is a 90 degree angle off of that line. You can see I've already started uh, off the bow. And what you do is just get a square, find a flat spot on the ship, line it up, draw your line down. Then you need to make your grids all the way across. Now to do that, I just go ahead and get a piece of uh, styrene. I don't remember how thick this is, but it is five centimeters, I'm sorry, five millimeters wide or half a centimeter wide. And uh, based on my reference photos, that should be correct for the uh, width of the lines that I saw. So we'll just go ahead and line these up, make some marks, and just go like this all the way across or reasonably f far down the hall. So there you can see it starts to show up. So let me go ahead and get a bunch of these on and move on to the next part. Right, so there's the grid. You guys should be able to make that out. Obviously it doesn't need to be this dark if you're doing it by yourself, but I want it to show up on the camera. Okay, so now we need our horizontal lines. Another piece of styrene. Um, this one I cut to 10 millimeters because it seems like it matches the reference photos and then uh, you got to pick a place to start. So actually looking uh, at my pictures the top of the black water line is actually good to get your first one going. So you just lay it on here like so and get a line going across here just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be enough of a grid that you're going to end up um, having your dents in the proper spot, or at least in a in a pattern. Uh, and then we move down right here, and so forth. Okay, and you just keep working your whole way down. Uh, I do want to know. Let's zoom out here a little bit. I stopped right about here. This is where the bulk of the pounding on the hull is and the wear. The wear further back on the hull is different. The dents are different, mostly from tugs and scraping along the Panama Canal later on, which we're not too worried about. There was that whole incident with the Japanese Zero. We'll do different dents later, but this is how we got to get this all laid out. So let's finish that up. All right, so now the grid pattern has been laid out, and it's time to put uh, the dents in. Two tools. Uh, we're going to use uh, their wood gouges, the Swiss made 7 by 25 that's the sweep, and then the shallower one, uh, 3F by 14 this is kind of a fishtail uh, pattern. These are stupidly sharp, I'm just going to remind you one more time, um, very dangerous, but they work. So anyway, let's. Um, they provide the shallow enough and smooth finish uh, that we're looking for. So let's just zoom in here. We'll pick a spot, uh, make sure that it stays in focus. And yeah, you're just going to stay in between a grid and just very carefully. See how it slipped there? Make sure if it's going to slip, that it slips away from you. Just take out that shallow little bit. It looks ugly, It's but we'll smooth it out and I mean, I could just barely feel that we've got a dent there. So let's do the next spot over. Yep, 
it is hard because it's a curved surface just like that like so all right there's I mean they look ugly but they're smooth and they're just real subtle little dents now if we switch to the other one it does let's see make sure we're still in view here it makes a very shallow cut almost impossible to see but if you run your finger over it you can totally feel it there and we could do another one here you angle down where you can get a little more bite out of it. Okay. Alright. I know that it looks really rough and ugly. Uh, that's just the discoloration in the plastic. And we'll get it all smoothed out later. But you can feel it comes along smooth and there's just a nice little teeny dent right there. We will hit this finally with some uh, 1200 grit sandpaper just to take the little hard edges off and then we'll hit it with paint. So the key is to now very carefully do that uh, along here mostly in this area because that's where it primarily is in the pictures. There wasn't a lot of damage up here a little bit and then in most of my reference photos when you get down into this part of the hall it was pretty smooth um, it, you know it's a little more robust so let's go ahead and do that uh, next alright so here's what it looks like after uh, the initial carving um, <clears throat> if you freak out about this you're like oh my gosh what am I gonna do uh, like here's my filler that I use you just put it back on fill it in sand it off and you're smooth and you can start all over again or abandon this entire process um, it went pretty well. I eventually switched over primarily to uh, the 3F14 because it was just easier to take nice little subtle light cuts that you may not even really be able to see. Uh, so let's turn the hall here. If we go in an angle like this, you can kind of see better what we're trying to get at. It's not so perfectly flat and smooth and you got some lines in there. So the next thing to do is hit it with some sandpaper and <clears throat> just smooth this out a little bit and then we'll get some paint on it, let it dry, just so you can see what's going on. But that's basically the the uh, bulk of what's happening here. And let's, let's zoom in up close so you can see just little stuff. And no, it's not perfect. No, it's not perfectly even just like the real thing. It's it's very difficult to do. Um, I have a lot of experience using wood tools and making gouges and grooves in wood. This is styrene. It's hard to control, but you could fill it back in and start over again. We're just going for a subtle effect because remember, you're going to get a lot of paint on this and build up some layers. The idea is just to have it there and not be perfectly smooth. So let's smooth it off, get some paint on it, see what it looks like. All right, so here's my grid pattern for the starboard side of the hall. I've been working on uh, trying to find out the best way to carve my little dips in. And what I ended up getting um, out of my shop is this is called a card scraper. And here is basically the curve that we would like to put into the hall right there on these lines. And the way a card scraper works, if you're not familiar, is basically you <laughs> you make this thing flat perfectly flat and then you take a hard piece of steel and you run it along here and you create a little hook that is imperceptible to the eye but you could see my nails dragging across so what this does is it allows me to have a lot more fine-tuned control uh, over the shape that I'm creating which is something I was having an issue with on the gouge so let's go ahead and see if I can't demonstrate uh, how this works. All right, so we'll we'll pick a square. We'll we'll say we'll go uh, here to here. And as you can see, 
there's a curve there and this is you know a nice flat surface and we want to put a dent so just start right at the top and pull right at you and we're going right to the edge of our line because the problem I was having with the gouge was it didn't I couldn't get a uniform pass that was smooth and it just wasn't looking right and this allows me to make nice little passes that seem to go right to the edge just where you want all right okay so now the tool fits flush in the hole there and I'll see if I could show you what I'm talking about we we got our tool to fit right down in there and make a curve and if I go like this you can see that a little bit of light coming through there and that is the dent that we made and you can see on either side it's nice and flat so all we gotta do is continue to do that along the whole hall and I think this will give me um, the results that I'm looking for it's gonna take a little while though alright I'm gonna try and do this real quick freehand while the paint's still kind of wet um, just gotta well, it's a primer coat on there of gray, but as you can see, it's not flat anymore. There's some dents in there, and I think it helps a little bit. Um, not totally convinced. I'm happy with how this is turning out, but it definitely lends to the ship not being, you know, just totally flat which it wasn't. We got to do the whole other side still. But yeah, it's a start. So anyway, that's what we've got going for now. Let's get the uh, rest of it done because we're going to have to figure out how to simulate some more of the hull plating along here. Uh, probably with some layers of paint. So yeah, press on. Alright, so I realized after my last video shot that I put way too much, um, way too many dents in the side of the ship. That basically, that area is where the uh, armor belt is, and although yes it is slightly dented up uh, on the real thing right now, and obviously I was wearing hair on it, wasn't that nearly that bad. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and fill that whole area in. Um, and smooth it off and place more emphasis on the armor belt. On a positive note though, I am starting to get the effect that I want. It's not as good as I was hoping for, but uh, we are going to build up the layers of paint. Basically, as I've been painting this, sanding it, working on my little uh, oil can dents, it's starting to look a lot better, I think. I'm starting to get the effect that I want. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, it's this was an experiment. It was something that I was hoping would work out really well. It didn't work out really well, and this is how you go about fixing. You just fill it in and sand it off and smooth it out. Um, once that's all done, though, we're going to start masking off next here and painting the... Uh, basically, I'm going to paint the armor belt on and not paint it as in, oh, you could see it, but like I want to build up a layer of primer very subtly uh, to create um, the look that you see in the photographs and on the real ship. Uh, fortunately, the oil canning that I did on the bow has helped define the lines of where that should go, and I think um, the oil canning will actually contribute to the overall look of everything, and uh, yeah, well, it'll work out in the end. But anyway, uh, sometimes we make mistakes, you gotta start over again, and it's no big deal, it's just part of the learning process, and um, I don't think I mentioned this before, I've only ever seen one other person do oil can. It was on Facebook, he showed a picture of a destroyer, it looked amazing, and it was years ago, and that's it. So I'm, I very much feel as though I'm just trying to figure this out. I've reached out on Facebook to try and uh, get some help from people on what may be the best way to go about doing this. Basically I've stumbled on the right path using um, the cardstock scraper 
uh, on smaller models, people are using an X-Acto blade that's curved and using it the same way. They're just scraping off uh, the styrene to make it work. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's where we're at with that part. Let's press on with the hull. All right, so I realized that um, instead of just painting this whole thing over, I could start building up my layer right now for the uh, armor plate. So I just masked this off and got a pretty heavy, well, there's actually three coats of paint on there, and you can see the little hard edge that created uh, to raise things up. Also, notice that the um, oil canning smoothed out really nice and looks really good. I've got a really bright light on it to highlight it. So once we get this other stuff painted over, I think it's going to look... Uh, exactly how I want. And if we turn here you can see we've got a more distinct line and the oil canning is still there but it's really subtle. So we're gonna get lots of layers of paint on this and I think we're gonna end up with the uh, desired effect. So again all I did was mask this off with two layers of masking tape, three coats of thick primer to fill that in. Now we've got a layer built out that's a little bit more correct for the scale. This should not be perfectly smooth. At one 200 scale, you could see lots of detail. You should be able to make out little subtleties as you get in close. So this is, this is starting to work out and go the direction we want. Okay, so here we are after having got copious amounts of primer paint on the hull to fix some boo-boos and uh, simulate our deck plating as best that we can. Let's move in here, and hopefully the light will show you. It's subtle, but there's our oil canning and the some of the hull plating. I think that I think that looks good. And if we turn here, though, you see it does not look great. This is straight on. It's still a little ugly. Uh, you can make out some of the deck plating. This is all achieved with layering up the paint. Um, just depends on. I mean, where we have the light. I mean, that's the that's the honest truth there. But you back up and you get out of the light, it quickly disappears. I had very difficult time with the reference pictures, um, trying to understand how the plating transitioned. There, the oil cane looks good too. To the midship where the um, armor belt's at, and the just. Warning, I have, a, I have a big reference book here in front of me. I have the internet, and I just had a lot of trouble with that. So, <clears throat> in the back, we did the same thing. Here, the oil canning turned out nice, uh, subtle, and then we have these distinct two layers in the uh, armor that go around. And that, I got out of my reference photos. Now, it's kind of a raised line with the paint. Um, but once we get more paint on here and more layers and a little bit of rubbing down, a little bit of light sanding, it's all going to kind of even out and look good. So this is the ship in rough primer uh, right now. So let's talk about uh, the next deck plating detail real quick. Okay, so the Pontos kit did not include the uh, little hull plates that are distinctly visible on the real ship and any pictures of it. Uh, so I went ahead and picked up the um, Edward um, kit. I like to pronounce it Edward. Anyway, uh, this is the kit. Here's the thing about it. Um, you get all your plates right here, the big ones and the little ones, and then these two um, guides, if you will, to put them on. And that's it. Now, when I got this, I thought, oh, that's that's cool. I'll flip these over and I'll see like little rivet details or something. Nope, I didn't. They're just flat. And this thing cost twenty dollars. I think there's a huge ripoff. Uh, for five dollars, I'd be fine with it. But the bottom line is, if you're just going to give me little plates like this, I have styrene strips, just super thin styrene, that I could put up. And if someone maybe was to measure this piece and put it up on the internet and give dimensions of this, uh, you could just go ahead and cut out your own guide out of styrene and cut your own strips out and, and put them on here and save yourself $20.
So anyway, um, let's go ahead and we'll follow the instructions and get those plates put on here next and take a look at it. Alright, there's the hall plating installed. All 20 segments on both sides of the ship. Obviously I left it so that you could see it. Uh, the little jig works fine. You just hang it on the side like that. Put your piece in. You move it over 35 millimeters. You put the next one on, you move it over 35 millimeters. And you put the next one on the whole way across. They are, let's move in here. Cause, there we go. They're super teeny tiny. Um, I mean, if I put my finger up to them, they're... I, you're barely going to be able to notice them, but they're there, it's correct, and uh, yes. Okay, so there's some detail now that needs to go on. Just a few things uh, from the Pontos kit, mainly the uh, ladders on the back of the fantail, and then a couple little details that go on the side here, that's about it. Then we need to start getting into some painting. Um, I'm not priming over these because they're so subtle that they'll just completely disappear with a few coats of uh, primer paint. Uh, we don't want to lose that detail. So that's that. Hall's looking all right. Get a view of some of the oil canning there. Um, it's not the best job I've ever done for sure, but it has the effect. And I look, I could have just put this on, marked my lines, painted it red, black stripe, blue and been done with it just like everybody else does but I, I wanted to add some texture and lines that aren't in the kit that you can see uh, when you get up close to it like yeah right there so okay let's uh, move on with the next stuff all right time for some uh, Pontos detail right here are two little things I'm going to show you that will probably disappear there's a total of five on the side uh, I think these are like loops for tip it up like that uh, rigging the go in place here is our dime so you can see how teeny tiny that they are um, once they're painted I'm sure they'll disappear and I don't know how I'm going to keep them from getting knocked off the ship uh, there are three more let's look at those here are the other three uh, towards the aft end of the ship now let's take a look at the fantail the stern all right, so there was stairs molded on, ladders, sorry, molded onto the back here that I removed because we're going to replace those with Pontos ones. And then you've got these uh, two little, we'll call them vents. And they're nice. They've, they've got a little uh, rib detail here. Um, quick note when putting them on, they this is a curved surface. The top of this is flat, so you'll have to cut a, carve a little bevel into it to get it to sit flush on that flat surface there. Now, and you can see some of the uh, oil canning back here. I have not installed, there's a jig to put the um, ladders on. I haven't done that yet because this is a very difficult area to mask off for uh, the hall painting. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this. We're going to paint the hall first, get the, all the primary colors on. Then we'll come back and install the ladders. They'll be easy to touch up and paint after the fact. But uh, that is, that's it. Um, as far as all the initial work we're going to do on the hall before we start painting it, it is huge um, still and oh, the camera's backed up all the way, zoomed out, there we go. That's how she fits in the picture. So uh, what I'm going to do now is mask off the waterline for the red. I'm not, and I'm going to go down. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then mask above the red water line and we'll put um, the hull gray color that's going to go on and then on top of that we will put our black boot stripe because that is going to get worn a little bit away and you want to see the original hull color underneath so time to start painting masking and painting here we go so here we go this is the ship painted up now with our base colors uh, done. This isn't the finished product by any stretch of the imagination. We just got, you know, the three colors. So the measure 22 calls for a navy blue line on top, which I put down. Uh, it's the same color as what went on the Arizona, and it was incredibly dark. 
And so what I did was went back with intermediate blue to lighten it up a little bit um, and add a little weathering effect and give it just a little bit of tonality. Um, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. You could still make out some of the detail here and things that are going on. And from over here, see, there's some of the oil canning slash tin canning. I think you can agree that it looks pretty good from here. Zoom out just a little bit. And the gray on the top here, this is supposed to be um, haze gray. Now, I like Model Master enamel, and that's not an option in enamel anymore. Uh, you have to purchase that color. Haze gray only comes from Model Master in acrylic. So, I did the best I could to match up the acrylic haze gray with the nearest uh, um, substitute in enamel. And that color ended up being French blue. I'm sorry, it's French light blue gray. French light blue gray in enamel. And they're almost, um, it says wrench because it's cut off, but they're almost exact matches. So that's the color that we went with here um, initially for getting the base colors on. So that's the ship. Um, I'll take you around on the other side. Well, I'll take you in here a little bit closer to see some things. All right, here from the bow, I've had to adjust the light, but if you look carefully, you can see the oil canning or tin canning of the hull. I think it looks good. That was the effect I was going for. From this angle, the line doesn't look very straight and level. It's a little wobbly. My bootstripe will have to yeah, touch some of that up. This, like I said, this is just the base colors um, that we're working with here. And that's the other side. I don't know if the light... Let's move this here, make it so we can see. There you go. Some of the oil canning there. It's subtle. It was really awful uh, when I first started, but um, it's looking all right now. So, anyway, this detail. Got again, like I said, really close to see the stuff, but it it's there. We got ways to go, but. That's it for now. So anyway, all right, that's that's as far as we're going to get on this episode. We'll come back to you here after I've come back from training sometime in August. Thank you very much for watching.